Hi, welcome back to the first law of thermodynamics and physical chemistry. I'm Kevin Tokoff. Make sure to like this video, subscribe to the channel for future videos and notifications. Two of the variables, or in some cases functions, that we use in thermodynamics to calculate things like entropy, which we'll do later on, we can use it ultimately to calculate the heat, and if we're at constant pressure, then we can use that to calculate the enthalpy, and so forth, are the heat capacities. And depending on the situation that your problem calls for, you might need one or the other of the heat capacities, okay? The heat capacity when you're at constant pressure is given by C sub P. And any time in physical chemistry, um, when you have this little variable here that's down as a subscript on the right side of whatever function or variable you're talking about, that means that variable is kept constant. So if I'm talking about C sub P, what I ultimately am talking about is this is corresponding to ultimately a change in pressure that's zero, meaning there's constant pressure, right? If I'm talking about C sub V, well, then that implies that I'm, I have constant volume. So the change in volume is zero. There's no change in volume, okay? If I'm talking about C sub P, that, that usually is going to mean I'm talking about an isobaric system. C sub V is isochoric. Now, in some problems, um, for example, they may give you a CP, or they may give you a CV. Now, for example, if let's suppose in a problem, let's suppose they were to give you a CV, okay, but you're in an isobaric system. Well, if it's isobaric, or if the, if the setup of the problem calls for CP, you're not given CP, you're given CV. So the question is, how do you go from CV to find CP, which is what you want. Well, it turns out there's an equation that we will not derive here, but this equation where CP, the heat capacity at constant pressure, is equal to CV plus T times the partial of P with respect to T at constant V times the partial of V with respect to T at constant P. And you're going to evaluate these two partial derivatives, multiply both of them by the temperature, and add that to CV, and that will give you CP. Okay? So, if you want to take partial of P with respect to T and partial of V with respect to T, that also means that you're going to have to have an equation of state. Okay? So if you have an equation of state, you can take the appropriate partial derivatives. So what we're going to do in this video is we're going to attempt to quantify the relationship between CP and CV for various equations. So we're going to do this for the ideal gas. Then we're also going to do this for a van der Waals gas. And in another, another video, we're actually also going to do this for the hard shell model, which is another model um, equation of state that you could use for certain, um, certain um, problems. Okay? So the first thing we're going to do is do this for the ideal gas formula. Okay? So the first thing I want to do is I want to take the partial derivative of P with respect to T. So I'm going to take the partial of P with respect to T, and I'm going to assume that the volume is constant. Okay, what is this partial derivative? Well, if I'm differentiating P with respect to T, this is just going to be simply nR over V. Okay? Now, if I want to find the partial of V with respect to T, assuming pressure is constant, I can't take it in this form, right? Because I'm in the form P is nRT over V. Okay, I have this equation solved explicitly for pressure. However, remember, I can multiply both sides of this by volume and then devote, divide both sides by the, uh, by the pressure. Notice here the pressure cancels, here the volume cancels. And now the equation I'm left with is V is equal to nRT over P, right? And so now what I can do is I can explicitly take the partial of the volume with respect to the temperature, and that's holding pressure constant. So if I differentiate V with respect to T, that's just going to be nR over P. Okay? And then I'm going to take this first partial derivative, which is ultimately, that's actually this one right there. I'm going to take the second partial derivative, which is the second one right there, multiply by T, and that's the, the, that's the, um, the component I'm going to add on to CV to get CP. So let's see exactly what that is. So this means that CP is going to be equal to CV plus temperature times this first partial derivative is just nR over V. The second partial derivative, notice this is going to be nR over P. Now, this looks like a big mess. But there's actually two ways you can go about doing this. The first way, which is really going to show you exactly how things cancel, is notice that since we're dealing with an ideal gas, 
Notice that P is just equal to nRT over V, right? So what I'm essentially going to do is I'm just going to replace this P down here in the denominator. I'm going to replace that with the expression for the ideal gas solved for P, okay? So this is going to be CV plus T times nR over V, and then this is going to be times nR divided by, and P is going to be equal to nRT over V, right? nRT over V. Now notice several things. Number one, the nR right here cancels with the nR right there, okay? The T temperature cancels with this temperature right there. Um, and then also notice, I can rewrite what I have equals CP equals CV plus, I have this nR over V, right? And then this is essentially right now a one in the numerator. So one divided by one over volume is just times volume. And, so, and then so notice that the volume cancels out here. And so what we actually find is the relationship is going to be CP is equal to CV plus nR. Okay, this is actually one um, way to write this formula. And in fact, if you're given CP, CV and you want to find CP, all you have to do is add NR. Now you have to be careful because one thing I can do to this equation is I can actually divide through by N the number of moles. And I'm going to get it in this form. CP comma N is equal to CV comma N plus R. So what is the relationship between CP and CPN or CP comma N? Well, it's the same relationship between CV and CV come in. It's that when you're looking at the CP sub N, it's actually going to be in units of joules per Kelvin, meaning that it's independent of the number of moles that you have. Okay, If I actually have CP, just regular CP, then this is going to be joules per mole Kelvin, meaning that if I actually want to find the absolute heat capacity at constant pressure, I would actually have to multiply times the number of moles. So if I multiply, if I multiply CP by the number of moles N, then that's going to multiply by a unit of moles to ultimately give me joules per Kelvin. Okay, so if you specify that it's CPN, then that's going to be joules per Kelvin, and it already takes into account the number of moles that you have. If you have CP or CV just by itself, then it's going to be in units of joules per mole Kelvin, and you have to specify the number of moles that are given in whatever problem um, you have. Okay, now there's also one more way to solve this for CP is equal to CV plus NR. And the way to recognize it is notice that this component right there, it's in a little bit of a different form, but notice we have NRT over V. This is TNR over V, but if you rearrange the above variables, it's NRT over V. This is actually just pressure, right? This component right here is just pressure, so P. And so then you get CP is equal to CV plus, this is P, and then it's times NR over P. And then P cancels, and then you just have CP is equal to CV plus NR. Now you might say, well, why that, that looks a lot easier. The benefit of doing the first method that we did is that you get to see explicitly what cancels. When you do it using the second method that I just showed you, you have to be able to recognize that NRT over V is just pressure okay, for an ideal gas. Now, if you're able to recognize that, then by all means, just go ahead and say this is P and then cancel them and you get it, the answer much more quickly. But if you want to show explicitly that this is NR as the um, product of the partial derivatives, then you can just go ahead and, and substitute P for NRT over V and do that.